Hey everybody, it's your old cousin Jack with another episode of Wood Carving Weekly. For this week, we have a community spotlight where we'll highlight the work of a renowned carver. We'll have a project showcase for you and tell you how you can get involved with that. I'll also share some information about another wood carving blog that we haven't talked about yet. And we'll also spend some time talking about tools, of course, wood carving tools uh, of interest, woodworking. And we'll spin around YouTube to see what we can see. Let's get started. All right, so our project showcase for this week comes from Wood Carving Illustrated. It's time for the Great Santa Carve Off. Now, this is a carving competition, so to speak. Uh, if you're interested in entering, you do not have to be uh, subscribed to the Wood Carving Illustrated magazine. You can go to the website and enter the Santa Carving Contest. Your carving doesn't have to be an original work. You could have carved it from a cutout, another carver's design, maybe even a rough out. But it does have to be Santa, right? Now, the deadline to enter is December 17th. It's open now, and you can enter as many times as you like. In addition to entering the competition, you can also participate as a voter. See, these prizes, in the, this time, they're giving away up to $1,700 worth of prizes. The top five winners will pick up some prizes and there will be some additional bonus prizes for the editor's picks. But the primary five winners are going to be voted on by people like you and me. You just go to the website and vote. You can only vote once. So that's the great Santa Carve Off. Get out there and participate in our project showcase. Let me tell you about a wood carving blog that we haven't covered yet. Dana and David are the creators behind Carving Junkies, and they have a blog where you can access all kinds of information, including some comprehensive articles about wood carving. They also have quite a few step-by-step -step tutorials that include pictures from all kinds of different angles that will help you through the carving process. They'll have some product reviews there of various um, tools and gouges and other products that they have used and that they recommend and you can gain access to some additional resources if you join uh, for free their Covered in Chips Carving Club. All you have to do is kind of sign up on the website there where the blog is, enter your name and your email address, and you're good to go. So go ahead and check out Carving Junkies. It's time for our community spotlight where we highlight the work of a wood carver, and this week we'll start with the story of a boy. This boy really wanted a toy tomahawk. And growing up on a farm near Hoffman, Minnesota, there weren't a lot of stores around and his parents weren't all that enthusiastic about spending money on a toy tomahawk. So the boy grabbed an old peach crate, took a piece of wood from that and carved himself his own toy tomahawk. That may have been his very first carving. Later on the boy grew up, went to college and had an opportunity to visit Scandinavia where he was captivated with these flat plane carvings that he saw in the tourist shops there. Later, he would become world renowned in the Scandinavian flat plane carving style. You see, that boy is Harley Refsel. And now you know who this person is. And uh, he's well renowned, of course, for his Scandinavian flat plane carvings. I'm going to share a video with you now uh, from writer and director Michael Crow, who sat down with Harley and put together a story from 10 years ago called Life of the Knife. In this video, what you'll listen for really is Harley's philosophy around things that are made with your own two hands. You know, nowadays we live in an age where there's artificial intelligence, 3D printers, CNC machines. And Harley talks a lot about the meaning behind and the reward behind making something with your own two hands. So take a look, and um, while you're looking at the video, I think you'll probably see a wooden toy tomahawk. Enjoy. Let's talk about some tools. The folks over at Beavercraft have come up with a new carving hatchet called the AX-1. And today, I'm gonna to share a video with you from Mark Young, who lives in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Mark really loves being out in the woods. He does a lot of bushcraft things and shares wood lore. He has done a product review 
where he compares the new Beavercraft AX1 hatchet to a more expensive carving hatchet that he already has. Now Mark does a really good job, a comprehensive review of the Beavercraft hatchet. He goes through the materials that are used in making the handle and also the head. He talks about the ergonomics of the handle, the wood grain and which way it runs in the handle. He also does a demo where he compares cuts from the Beavercraft hatchet with the more expensive hatchet. And he shares his thoughts with you about the good, the bad, and some improvements that he would recommend. So check out his channel and see what he has to say about the new Beavercraft carving hatchet. Okay, let's take a spin around YouTube. We'll start in New Zealand with Matt Carves. Earlier in another episode, we shared with you one of Matt's videos. And this time around, he's making a brooch, a really good looking finished product. And during this video, he shares with you some information about his thoughts on the design itself and some of the design choices that he made. He also shows you how he transfers the pattern from his design onto the wood. And he has some really cool extreme close-up slow motion video that he has incorporated into this. Uh, it's really nice. I like it a lot. And you'll see Matt using his bandsaw, his scroll saw, his Dremel drill press, and a variety of carving bits. And he shares with you information about those bits as he goes. So go ahead and check it out. That's Matt Carves. All right, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Doug Linker's newest video. Doug has a spool carving video and he tells you in this that he has drawn his inspiration from Dale Kirkpatrick, also known as Carver Dale. Uh, see, Dale did a demonstration for the International Association of Woodcarvers, uh, I think it was last year, maybe even before that, where he talked about carving old sewing spools. These spools are usually made of beech. Um, they don't really make them out of wood anymore, so you have to find some old ones, uh, maybe in an antique store or maybe even at the Goodwill. Anyway, Doug shows you a variety of different ideas, thoughts about what you could carve on these little spools, and he goes through a carving demo, more of a demo than a tutorial, but he shows you his, uh, his way that he would carve a pumpkin, and he paints it up and everything and does a really good job, as usual. So check it out and see if maybe carving a spool would be in your future. Well, Dennis Nolan has a new video to share with you over at Ozark Arts and Crafts. Dennis is going to share with you his process for putting a, a walking stick together. So he's going through the process of sanding, staining, and also finishing the stick. He shows you how he uh, attaches the cane topper staff topper to the stick and then also how to make a nest with paracord to cover up the seam between the topper and the stick. He also goes through the process of attaching some paracord as a grip along the shaft of the walking stick and he has a special surprise inside the resin ball that's on the topper that he will share with you as well. So have some fun, go over and check out Dennis Nolan's new video and see what you can see. Well, Mike Stinnett has a new carving video where he shows you how he makes a walking stick that includes a chipmunk and a rattlesnake. And Mike does an incredible job as usual. In this video, you'll see him using a hook-billed pruning knife to strip some bark off of a log. You'll see him using a mirror in a way that is uh, very interesting too. He's got the mirror and he's holding it up so he can see the eye of the chipmunk that's uh, on the side furthest away from him while he's shaping and carving the eye on the side that is facing him. So yeah, uh, take a look at that with the mirror. Now you'll also see him using an old rifle shell casing to form the rounded eyes of the rattlesnake. And of course, you'll see him using a variety of tools and power tools, hand tools, you name it, and a wood burner, as usual, uh, to put in some incredible details. And make sure you look for Pearl, his little dog. You'll see her chasing a chipmunk. Enjoy. If you could only see the blooper reel, 
folks. Uh, thanks for all your support. I really appreciate it. Sunny does all the heavy lifting on these videos. If you like them, let her know. Just hit that like button, okay, down below. Um, even leave a comment. Love to hear from you and, and respond back. And I hope you enjoyed today's show. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Now, to start with telling you about... <clears throat> I got peanut in my throat. Oh, God. So Mark does a really good job. A con pump, comp comprehensive... <laughs> a, yeah. <laughs>